Live Storm Team. Welcome back. The third day of a trial is over for a suspended West Fargo teacher accused of having a sexual relationship with a teenage student while she was a senior in 2009. Teachers and former students testified most of today. And a handwriting expert said the questionable writing on the Twilight book given to the victim by Aaron Canodal is likely to be his. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop is following the trial and has details. It's kind of one of those things where when you look at some students, sometimes they need some extra attention and so as a teacher you will often give that to them and foster that because you want them to stay in school and you want them to do well. Today fellow teachers and students testified. The accuser's friends say something Just was up with her in 2009. Nothing sexual but when your best friend stays behind in the classroom when you go to get coffee for the two of you it's a big red flag and that was inappropriate I thought. She was very withdrawn and difficult to communicate with. Um, she isolated herself a lot at her home and seemed to be very upset. She was severely depressed, you could just tell, but she wasn't happy, she looked emaciated, she lost a lot of weight and then gained a bunch of weight. Her weight was fluctuating like crazy. The there prosecution also called a criminal intelligence analyst and Ingo, who showed the call logs. Over 2,157 minutes again, were spent between Canoto and, and his accuser from January through March. The and prosecution said 23 of those both, calls uh, were made after 10 p.m. Yes, the state rested their outcome. case and the defense began presenting theirs. They called former students and teachers to the stand. Locking the door and even turning the light off doesn't necessarily mean that someone won't uh, think your room is then empty and, and want to access it to use it for. I've had my door locked, think I'm going to hide and correct papers and have somebody walk in and say, oh, I didn't see your light on, thought I'd make a phone call in here, or I, can I read a test to a student in here, or. I would say that Mr. Knodal is the best teacher that I've ever seen over the years that I've been working at West Fargo High School. The prosecution did ask every teacher if they had phone conversations with students after 10 p.m. How about the timing of the calls? Any of those calls around midnight that you made or took from students? No. In Fargo, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. And the defense will continue with more witnesses tomorrow. Let's toss it over to Hutch now for all your weather details. Hutch? Well, here's how we started our day. It was crystal clear and very cold. It was 15, a low temperature in Fargo, missing a record low by a whole degree. Gorgeous sunset. And we warmed up rather quickly. And the lack of wind throughout the entirety of our day has really made things quite pleasant. Now, you can certainly see that we're seeing clouds pressing in from the west, 52 and calm at this hour. The air over Fargo-Moorhead very dry at this hour. And uh, that means any rain that we see on the radar will have a hard time making its way all the way to the ground until it's over us for quite a little bit of time. Everyone's wind pretty quiet. Jamestown picking up to 15 miles per hour. We have 55 degrees in Oaks. Jamestown 51 with some showers trying to push their way in. 52 in Fergus Falls and in Wapiton. And we see the clouds starting to make their way in as we have a weather system pushing through the central Dakotas. It's creating some rain showers in the central Dakotas. And as it moves its way eastward and starts falling into this very dry air, we start seeing it drying up just a little bit. Uh, the radar showing some rain in the Jamestown area, also near the uh, Devil's Lake area, but not all of this or any of it really reaching the ground, maybe up by Harvey and portions of Wells County. We're seeing some wet sidewalks from this deeper green shade uh, activity pressing in towards Carrington. All right, your hour-by-hour hour forecast does show that as we set things into motion this evening, we're not seeing a lot of green on the future radar, and that's because our air is so dry, I don't expect significant amounts of rain to hit the ground this evening, even in our westernmost counties, although you may see some drops on your windshield. Temperatures falling into the 30s this evening by 10 o'clock, especially out to the east where there'll be a few more breaks in the sky. Then as we head through the overnight, the clouds and showers will make their way through. Now, we will have a chance at seeing with temperatures near 33 degrees here in Bemidji, here in the Hubbard County area, a chance for some flurries mixing it with those showers of rain overnight. Watch what's hap what happens after we head off to work and school in the morning. Temperatures in the 30s, cloudy skies. 
wind about 15 miles per hour, a chance of some morning sprinkles and rain showers across Minnesota. Our model kind of changing its tune just a little bit, putting a better chance of rain in Minnesota for the day tomorrow. Now, as we go through the afternoon, we'll see most of those showers pressing into central and eastern Minnesota. And a chance for some more developing showers, hit and miss variety on the backside of the system as you see the clouds here, but not a lot in the way of rain. Temperatures will hit near 50 degrees tomorrow in Fargo, a little cooler north and, of course, east. 37 as you're heading out the door, chance for some sprinkles to start the day in Fargo, maybe some flurries out near Wadena and Bemidji. 45 degrees with southeast winds at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. 50 degrees and a spotty afternoon sprinkle or two. Now look at your planning forecast elsewhere. 53 in Lisbon, 54 in Oaks. It does look like that wind will be picking up a little bit from the east-southeast. Lakes country will be in the upper 40s for most. 45 Bagley, 48 in Roseau, a better chance of showers in our easternmost counties in the afternoon. Afternoon, drier conditions across northeast portions of North Dakota, a little breezy and cool in the low 50s. Better on Saturday, we'll kiss 60 degrees in Fargo, we'll see a few clouds. Sunday looks fantastic, mild and 65 degrees. Now next week, we have a chance at some hit and miss showers, maybe even a rumble of thunder in there Monday night into Tuesday, but look at the 70s returning. So something to please everyone. We'll have some rain chances to green things up a little bit and then yeah. some sun to bring right. the, um, what do you call that stuff, green? Yes, yeah, yes, that's good, thank you, Hunch. Later in sports, Bison gearing up for their annual green and gold game. How the defense is shaping up. And up next, let the wild times begin for another season at a local zoo.